Hi everyone. Okay, I hope you can hear me properly because my neighbours are, um, I think they're like chipping a load of wood or something next door, but it's, it's pretty noisy. But I thought I just need to do this video anyway because it's been, it's been ages, I've been busy. Oh, I think they've just stopped. Timing! Oh my God, that's such good timing. I can't believe it. <laughs> it might start up again in a minute. Anyway, um, I wanted to show you how to make some little beakers. Um, I did a workshop last night for the Pottery Brunch Club um, Extra and we made some beakers. So I thought, oh, I better just do a YouTube video on, on how to make seamless beakers. Just these cute little things, but they don't have any seams. So we're not using slabs this time. We're gonna use um, a sausage and a stick, a sa sausage on a stick. <laughs> it is actually gonna be a sausage on a stick technique. That's what I'm gonna call it, I've decided. Okay, so if you wanna make um, a set of beakers that are all the same size, um, then the easiest way to do that is to roll out a nice fat sausage, okay? Um, and what you can do as well is just cut the ends off so that you've got nice, neat, flat ends. And you might just put that aside because you might want to make a little handle or something out of that. So I've just got a nice thick round sausage. If I show you how round, it's like that thick. What's that? That's like, um, I don't know, a little bit thicker than a broom handle, maybe? Um, anyway, that kind of thickness, okay? Yeah. <laughs> so if you, like this is enough to make, well, I mean, God, it's gonna easily make four. So if you want stuff to be the same size, the easiest thing is to make a thick fat sausage, cut it in half, yeah? And then just cut these bits in half again. I'm just eyeballing it, you know, they don't have to be exact. And actually, I don't even know why I'm making them all the same because I quite like them when they're different. But anyway, I just thought it's good to show you guys how you can make them the same-ish, you know, depending on, I mean, you can measure it, can you, with a ruler if you wanted to be super, uh, super accurate. Okay, so you've got like your little chunk, your little sausage, right? Um, and the other thing that you're gonna need is some doweling. Um, I mean, I've got two bits, but just a bit of doweling doesn't really matter. Or even like, if you didn't have doweling, you might be able to, yeah, you might be able to use like, I don't know, a wooden spoon handle or something, maybe, I don't know. But anyway, so, and um, with these beakers, I quite like them to have a little bit of a taper, yeah, at the base. So the first thing you're going to do is just squeeze one end of your um, fat sausage, okay, just to give that a little bit of a narrowing, just a tiny bit. Then you're going to take your dowling and you're going to sort of bore it right into the middle of your um, fat sausage. Okay, and I go about halfway and then I put my hand over the end and I just keep boring my way in until I just feel, oh, a little bit of pressure pushing up against my thumb, that end, okay? Because you don't want to pop it out through the end, otherwise you'll have a cylinder. Um, but you, and you don't really want to go too thin, but if you do, you can fix it, so don't worry. Anyway, so there's your sausage on a stick, okay? <laughs> I'm going to so name that this technique, the sausage on a stick technique. Um, okay, so the next thing you want to do is you need to be looking and all your focus and concentration and attention is going to be on this end here because this is what is going to end up being your rim, okay? And the idea is that um, in order for these to work, you want to focus on getting this thickness, the same thickness all the way around, okay? So when you put it down and start rolling it, I'll show you how to do that, you need to be looking here at this area here. I would like, love to demonstrate like that, but I can't see that end if I demonstrate like that. So I'm going to do it like this and then I'll, I'll show you, okay? So you put it down. I like to support it on one end. I put my hand on the stick this end and I press down on the stick and I basically roll the whole thing towards me, focusing on getting that the same thickness all the way around. So you can see that's one rotation, yeah? And it's opened it up a little bit. I'm gonna poke it back in and do the same thing again. It's not actually that even, I've got some like thick areas and some thin areas. So I'm gonna be careful now that I just sort of squeeze out the thicker areas a bit harder than the thinner areas. So I'm just focusing my attention on this end. That's two rotations. 
Can you see it's opening the form up a little bit here, um, but it's still it's still a bit uneven. I mean that's that's normal, but it's okay because you can just keep going until you get that a little bit more even this end. So I'm just helping it around. Uh, I'm avoiding any thin areas. So that's my kind of third rotation. Let's have a look. So it's still a bit uneven around that area there. So I'm just gonna pop it back down and just roll that towards me. Okay, that's, that's not looking too bad now. Let's have a look. Um, I'll just show you. So that's sort of, I don't know, four rotations away. Can you see, it's so easy to just open that form up and it's a completely seamless way of making a little beaker shape. Um, so if, another thing I, I like to do, like if your sticks made some, you know, little marks inside, just get your finger in there and smooth them out with your finger or your thumb, depending on, you know, how big your beaker is. And that will be absolutely fine for just smoothing it off inside. And the other thing, if there's any other little sort of uneven um, bits around your rim, and also generally inside, what you can do, and I quite like to do, is get my thumb inside, to, you know, don't use the stick anymore, get your thumb. And this time you're gonna be pushing and rolling it away from you using your thumb to kind of smear out any, um, you know, anomalies there around the rim with regard to thickness and thinness and you should be able to get it quite accurate using your thumb um, because like the, your fingertips you know have so many nerve endings like your thumb's going to be really good at figuring out um, and feeling your way around any thick areas and thin areas and what you can do actually is do the whole of the inside like this and it gives the inside a lovely smooth finish as well it actually feels really nice doing it kind of feels really satisfying. I'm gonna come show you um, a little bit closer because it's a bit far away. Um, so there you go. Can you see, let's see if I can get the light inside. Oh, it's pretty smooth. I, I'm not sure if you can see. Yeah, you can see. Um, and it's also, you know, what you're really looking for is this kind of rim to be of even thickness. So you don't want it going thick and thin and thick and thin. Um, you want to try and get that as even as possible at this stage. So it's nice and smooth inside. It's actually got quite a nice shape to it as well at the moment. I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that. It's a bit of a fluke. But anyway, don't worry about any of these cracks and things. I'll talk to you about what we can do to um, tidy those up. But I mean, how super simple is that? Um, sometimes you get a bit of a dip underneath here. Um, and what you can do with that is just press it down against the table or your surface, you know and just squeeze that down a bit of the base and that will flatten off the base nicely. So the next thing, so that's basically the making, okay, and you can um, wait for it to go leather hard, okay, before you start really refining that surface and tidying it up properly um, because it's, you know, it's such a good idea to just set it aside, leave the soft clay, you know, just get the basic making done and try and get it into a nice shape. But then later on, um, I'll show you these ones. So later on, you can start to refine that rim um, and the base as well and get them looking a bit better. So this one I made last night, so this is, this is leather hard now, okay? And basically all I did was get my um, surform, this tool, and just kind of, you know, refined that base a little bit around there like that. And I quite like the marks that it leaves as well. And I just did the same for the rim. So I really tried to get the rim like the same thickness all the way around. Like I like the way it's wonky and undulating. I don't want it level, but I do want it to be the same thickness because what you can see very clearly is as the light shines on the pot, the rim is very much illuminated and the interior is dark, yeah? And you can really pick out the, the thick and thinness of the rim. I mean, luckily this one's pretty even. So these tools are great for just refining your form, you know, but only when it's leather hard, okay? So this one, um, all I've done is I've just sponged it. I made it last night, so it's leather hard, uh, but it's quite, it came out quite a nice shape. You know, you can do a bit more kind of rolling on the table like this to get a better sort of form. And I made sure that I, 
you know, did a fairly good job of the rim, getting that the same thickness. And I've just sponged this one. So this is the difference between like a surformed edge and a sponged edge. I might just give that a bit of a sponging as well because I don't want it to be so sort of sharp looking, you know. Um, but you know, all of that stuff you do at leather hard. And another really good tool, you know, don't forget your cut credit card or even not, you're just the side of an old credit card, is a really good scraping tool for getting um, the form a little bit better. Um, so I just wanted to quickly show you something because I thought it was interesting. Um, so last night I made one for this demo. Um, let me just show you the difference, right? I'm gonna come up close again. It's gonna be, oh God, look, here we go. Knock it all over. <laughs> it's lucky they're left arm, they're not gonna get damaged. Um, so, I made this little one last night as a demonstration um, and I put a little handle on it, just a squashed kind of pea-shaped handle. And because I was doing this demo, oh God, um, I, what am I trying to say? I wanted to glaze it and everything uh, at the same time during the demonstration, okay? So I did, so we put the glaze on. I was saying to everyone, you've got to be really careful that you, when you glaze your pottery, you've let it dry a little bit if you're raw glazing, because if you glaze your pottery um, too soon before the clay has done any shrinking, then what can happen is that the glaze, because it's brush on glaze, will sort of set like a, like a kind of eggshell and the clay will shrink away underneath that glaze. And that's exactly what happened to my one. So I wanted to show you because it's quite interesting. So if I hold it up, can you see on the rim that the glaze has kind of set like a shell, yeah? And the clay underneath has done a little bit more shrinking overnight and it's just cracked. So if I touch that, that's just gonna flake off. Can you see? It's just flaked off, yeah? So this is a great example of, of how not to do it. <laughs> um, so I hope you understand why that happens. So basically the clay has to shrink 10 to 15% during the drying process, okay? But because I was rushing and doing a demo, I was drying it with my hot egg and I knew it was a little bit damp to put the glaze on because it's still gonna shrink, but I had to do it anyway. Um, so I did it and what's happened is overnight the clay has really shrunk back, but the glaze is just sit there. The glaze sits there and the clay shrinks. So that's why you, you can, when you're raw glazing, get this kind of flaking, you know, effect. And that's something to watch out for. Always better to wait before you raw glaze them. And um, these are gonna end up with this sort of nice copper oxide finish. So basically what I've done is put a white slip um, all over the, the beaker, left a bit around the bottom because I wanna show that nice mark. And then just put copper oxide mixed with water uh, sloshed on top of the glaze, sorry, so white slip, then two layers of transparent brush on glaze when it's dried a bit more and done its shrinking, and then just copper oxide over the top, and they should come out like that, and they're really, they're really yummy and nice. Um, so that's how to make a little beaker, what can I say? Give it a go, it's so, so, so easy, make a little set, they make lovely presents, and um, nice to have a little shot, or an espresso, or just put a little pose in or have another shot you know that kind of thing that's all for me for now see you soon bye